So we're going to go over here to our SAS folder and in our base one base directory, we need to create a new file, a new partial called underscore common dot SAS. And I like adding an actual CSS comment here so that in the output, you'll see the styles, uh, the title of the partial that you are working in so that the output makes sense. And we're going to, before we make any decisions about styling here, I'm going to go ahead and add the, this partial to my base directory. So I don't forget later, that'll cause a lot of issues for you. If you don't add it right away, because you're going to do a bunch of styles, you're going to save, you're not going to see your changes. You're going to be saying it's compiling, but why don't I see my changes? It's just simply because you haven't imported your partial that you just added. So import common. We're in the same directory, just common. It knows the extension done. It's going to start compiling that, uh, Partial, beautiful. So let's start off with the body indent. We're going to say font family because we have bourbon installed. We get to say font stack dash consolas. That's one of the available ones. That's going to change the whole font family to kind of a monospace style font, at least the body. I also want to change the H1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to font family. And we're going to use a, a a variable called sans, whoops, sans serif dash two. And the reason why I want to use that is because over here in variables.sass, I have two variables here, sans serif, which is PT sans, the Google font uh, in the header there, and sans serif two, which is titillium web, also a Google font. Uh, one thing I could have also done is added a uh, font. Um, I could have added a variable and pulled in the uh, font stack consolas variable, but that's already a variable in bourbon. So I didn't want to just, you know, be redundant, but it's up to you. Uh, text transform. That's going to be uppercase. So now all of our, uh, headings are going to have this sort of style. Just a typographic choice that I made and that you will follow level two heading font size three M. So what it's going to be three times the size of the base font size on the body. So now we're going to have on level two headings, they're going to be a little bit bigger. So you'll see, you'll see that subtle change in there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to style the wrapper class and we're going to give that the mix in of outer container. And this is coming directly from neat because I'm going to start making a grid now. And then we're going to select the header. I'm going to say clear fix on that because, um, we're going to start floating some things in this header, the nav and the logo, and that's going to, it's going to make that header collapse. So I'm going to put a clear fix on it so it doesn't collapse. And that is a mix in coming straight from bourbon as well. Padding 40 pixels, 40 pixels and zero 40 on the top, 40 on the left and right and zero on the bottom. That's what that is. That shorthand and brand. We're going to say that's brand. That is the logo. We're going to hide the text. This is again, another bourbon mix in. And we're going to say background center, no repeat height, 125 pixels width, 125 pixels margin. Whoops, just margin. I'm going to say 15 pixels, top and bottom zero left and right. And we're going to float this bad boy left. So let's see what that looks like so far. So there we go. You can see that it's floated. Uh, you don't see the text anymore, but you certainly don't see the logo. So we're going to need to add our logo in there, the retina version of the logo. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down a couple steps here. We're going to indent and add the mix in called retina, which we have in our mixins.sass partial. And we're going to call that and use that to uh, serve up a really nice crisp retina style image background image URL. It's gonna be dot, dot slash image slash bright side dash studios oh, studios dash logo underscore two X dot PNG. And then the background size is simply going to be the actual size of the original size logo so that it takes the big one and compresses it into that 125, 125, uh, dimension. And so now it should look like this much better. Obviously the nav is a little bit funky, but we will get to that. So under our retina here, uh, no longer indented, we're going to select the a tag. We're going to give it the color of brand dark. We want the, the links to be the black color border bottom. I want it to have solid one pixel and we're going to go for brand dark and then on hover. So I'm indenting on hover. I'm going to say the color will be brand primary. 
So now those links will be a little more like this. Nice. So now what we're going to do is style up some of those HTML5 tags. So we're going to say section, aside, and article. Indent in there. Margin top, 40 pixels. Margin bottom, 40 pixels. Reason why I'm doing top and bottom individually rather than uh, just margin and doing a shorthand is because these will likely have um, margins built in on the left and right because we're gonna make these, uh, they're gonna likely be grids or part of the neat mix-ins to be part of a grid and I don't wanna really mess with that. So just the top and bottom. And I'm also gonna give those a clear fix mix-in because they're gonna be floating and elements within those will be floating and I don't really want them to, co to collapse. And I know that that's going to happen. So, you know, when you're styling, you might not realize to put a clear fix until something collapses and then you add it afterwards. But I already know it's going to happen. So I put it in there. Now we're going to use a really cool uh, bourbon uh, variable that's an interpolated or an interpolation. So an interpolated variable, it's a mouthful. Basically just write what I'm writing here. And uh, this will allow you to select all the buttons. So we're going to say all buttons. And we're going to say font family. We're going to say sans serif and then background brand primary. That will make the buttons look a little bit more like this rather than their default. For that hover, I don't like that hover. I want it to be a little bit more uh, specific to the brand. So indent your hover pseudo class, and then I'm gonna say background, and then I'm gonna use a bourbon function here called shade. I'm gonna grab brand primary, darken it by 10% or add some black, some 10% black in there. So watch what happens. Subtle and beautiful. Great, so now we're gonna style up that nav. So I wanna take it away from this common SAS partial and add a nav SAS partial to the base directory. So new file, underscore nav.sass. And again, I'm gonna add a comment up here, a CSS comment and say nav.sass. And in here, we're just gonna start styling it up. But before I do that, I'm gonna to go to the base directory and import the nav, just like so. So now I can start styling that nav like this. We're gonna float it right. We're also going to say margin top 60 pixels and then font weight uh, bold. And then li, uh, the list items within it, so we're indenting now, display inline block and padding zero top and bottom 20 pixels left and right. Let's see what that looks like. Just like that, we floated it right, it's over there now. Margin top 60 pixels so that it's not up at the top of the viewport here, it's actually kind of in the center where the logo is. Font weight, it's bold. Uh, the list items are inline blo blocks so that they kind of float up together. I'm not using floats, I'm just using inline blocks so that they stay horizontal. And the padding, zero on the top and bottom. 20 pixels on the left and right so that these have space, some breathing room side by side. That's the nav, just like that. We're not gonna touch it anymore unless you want to. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump, we're gonna jump right down to the footer before we get to this stuff. And I wanna style this footer up. Just while we're in the base, I wanna just do the base styles first. So a new file within the base folder underscore footer dot sass partial. We're gonna say footer dot sass, uh, there we go. And now in order for that to work, you got it. We need to go to our base directory and import the footer just like so. Look at that, it's just like magic. Whew. Love it. Footer.sass, what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna style the footer. One very simple style. We're gonna say footer. We're gonna use a, a neat mix-in called span columns, and we're gonna have it span 12 columns, full width. Text align, center, padding, 40 pixels, top and bottom, zero on the left and right. Save that, and now your footer should look a little bit more like this. Super simple, very nice. It's spanning the full width, so it's gonna stay centered. And now you have the ability to add you know, if you wanted a grid within uh, that footer, you can do that just using some neat mix-ins. This is all I'm gonna do for now. And it's quite possible that the span columns 12 is redundant. If I take that out, it's likely that it's still gonna center anyway. It looks like it. So if you wanna leave that out, it's possible. I think I had that in there because I was playing around with a grid at one point uh, and I decided to take it out. So it's up to you. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come out of the base SAS uh, folder and we're going to go into our layouts director. We're going to move down now to number two. Now we're going to style is uh, kind of the layouts. So we have some a few styles here that I want to play around with. So a new file and we're going to say underscore home.sass in your layouts directory. Make sure you import that. It's simply just home. And now you could style it up. Home.sass 
and just a few styles here. Basic info class, we're gonna clear fix that because we're gonna have some grid elements floating in there. The about class is gonna be span columns. It's gonna be six columns and we're gonna shift it over one, like so. So if I save this, you'll see what that looks like. There we go, so it's six columns and it's shifted over one column, so it's kind of indented from the side. It looks kind of nice. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna select the widgets and we're gonna say background brand light I'm using a dollar sign, what is happening? There we go. And the padding will be 40 pixels all around. Save that uh, and that will look a little bit nicer over here. There we go, you can see these are the widgets and they are kind of a, that, that pale color. Beautiful, I want those level three headings within there, so indent that and say font size 2M, I want that to be a larger font size, and border bottom solid one pixel brand dark. Save that and your level three headings within there should be, or there you go, the level three heading will be larger with a, kind of a hairline in under it. Now what we're gonna do uh, is we're gonna collect, uh, sorry, style up the CTA, the call to action. So in our modules, create a new file, and call that CTA, sorry, underscore CTA, it's a partial, dot sass. Add that comment, and remember to uh, add it to your modules directory by importing it. And say CTA, very simple. Now under CTA, we're gonna say, uh, the class is call to action, very simple. We're gonna span some columns, it's gonna be four columns, and we're going to say omega, because it is the last one on the page, I don't want any margin on the right to conflict and push it down border, solid one pixel, I'm gonna say brand dark, padding 40 pixels, background, brand dark, and color brand light. Now I can see the background and the border are the same, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna darken the border so it's a little bit more contrast, just something subtle, darken it by 20%. And then I'm gonna save that, that will style and take care of our call to action. There it is right there, it looks very nice. Now what we're gonna do is finish this up by uh, styling the individual widgets and give them um, a column, make them columns. So this is also gonna be under modules. We're gonna create a new file, a partial called widget.sass. That's gonna say widget, save that. Make sure you add that to your directory. There we go, save that directory. Now we're just gonna do one simple selector, widget, span columns, it's gonna be four each. And we're gonna say, the so watch what happens. When I save this, watch what happens. We have an issue, I'm styling widgets. I actually just wanna style widget, not, not widgets. So save that again, let's check it out. So the widgets, uh, they should be, okay, so it looks like they fit. Uh, normally what I thought would happen is if on the last one, the margin on the third one will push it down. So what I was going to do was say uh, indent, and I'm gonna say last child, and then omega, mix in, and that will take off the margin on the right side uh, to push it back up. It was giving me that problem before, so I'm gonna add that just in case, in case it's a browser-specific issue. But that omega mix in will remove the margin on the last child. So one, two, three, this is the last child, it's gonna remove the margin on the right side to, um, to avoid that issue. And there it is. There is your final, final project for the landing page, just like so. It looks beautiful, it's built in SAS, uh, bourbon, neat, and bitters. It looks great, now it's totally up to you. Feel free to use this layout. I'm not gonna just uh, copyright this specific layout. If you wanna use this layout for your portfolio, have at it. I'd love a little credit somewhere if you wanted to put that, but for sure, feel free to use this if you want for your own agency, your own freelancing site, for a client site. And play around with it. If you just wanna take this further, play around with it, add some more pages, add some more content see what you can come up with. And I'd love if you shared it with us in the group to see what you come up with. And thanks so much for hanging out with me and playing around and coding some cool sites. I appreciate you. I hope to see you in another lesson. Cheers.